good morning if it's morning, good evening if it's evening, and good night if it's night. And a big hearty salam alaikum to each and every one of you that's listening to us live or will be listening to us in archives. I gotta tell you, this is, it's 12 o'clock somewhere with, of course, Candelo Kinbisa himself. I gotta tell you, um, the new year has come in with a whop. Um, just like the old year left with a whop, but um, that happens each and every year to myself. But it is a new year of learning and of expanding and of doing our damn thing. I was um, reading a couple of things, and I want to share with you a couple of things. And, and first of all, I want to tell you all again a happy and prosperous 2019. It was Last year was a year of heartbreak for a lot of us, a year of joy, a year of reunions, a year of breakups. But all I wish that this year, this year and all the years to come are years of prosperity, love, growth, emotional growth, um, spiritual growth. And that all the things that you have planted seeds for will give you fruit and fruition. I... um. Well, the first thing I, I want to talk about a little bit is, um, and I have to find it, of course, because um, because the letter of the year came out um, on the 2nd, I believe it was. Um, the letter of the year is something that we in the Orisha community um, look forward to, to, to the next year. Um, it is given out. Well, now it is given out in several different places. Um, it is given out in, in New York. It is given out in Miami. It is given out in Florida. It is given out in Mexico. It is given out in, in Cuba. But I reign by the one in Cuba. And the two Orishas that are governing this year by the letter in Cuba are Ogun and Oshun. Um, there is a lot to be said about the year of, the, of the, the, the letter of the year, and I hope that all of you will look it up. Of course, um, the letter of the year um, used to be done only in English, but now if you look up letter of the year 2019, you can also find it in English. Well, I got to tell you that this year, by my interpretation and the interpretation of other people that have seen it, is the year of teaching it is a year of um, where a person has to watch out for their mental health. It is a year where leaders will fall. But the main thing that this year acts is for is unity. Unity amongst the spiritual sect. The spiritual. Spirit is mad at us, dudes, ladies and gentlemen, because we tend to try to tear people down without any cause. The gossip this year needs to stop. The feelings of ego have to stop. And just because I am the type of person who makes up my own interpretations of stuff, this year, more than any other year in the past, is the be the shit without shitting on someone year. Meaning, you do not have to make your platform that of tearing someone else down. Egun has that. Eshu has that. The spirits that surround you have that. It is a year where we must live righteously. Where we must think of our fellow people. It is a year where we must think about our children. I hope that all you take this under consideration and follow the letter of the year, which can be found at the letter of the year 2019. And while you look it up or just sit back and listen to me, listen to my friend Asha. So you treat me like a modern slave, Mr. Jada. I've got to get. I wear uniforms, you wear uniforms too. I'm in chains, 
you're in change too our uniforms and you are uniforms too i'm a prisoner you're a prisoner too mr jailer Simple chords, A, you know. was Asa with Mr. Jailer. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love that song. I gotta say hi to everyone that's listening to us. A lot of people don't know that I'm back on the air. I took a little hiatus during the, the holidays. I really needed it and I needed to step away for a little bit and take care of my clients and take care of all this work that I had to do um, before the new year rang in. So please do share the word and tell people that we're back in strive again, as they say. Um, I was also um, looking at a whole bunch of stuff that I see online, and, and I needed a social media break. The bullshit is overflowing. So much people pulling some way, so much people pulling the other way, and everybody has an opinion, and none of them seem to set right with me. Once in a while, you have to plug off. You have to get off. You have to get off the train. You have to get out and step on the grass and 
smell the roses. And Lord knows I've been doing a lot of that. One of the letters of the year, or inside the letter of the year, it says that you must teach. You must teach. You must teach people, and what you do not know, you must learn. But I was thinking about my godfather. My dada, sorry, not my godfather. My godfather is another person. I was thinking about my dada within this um, new year, because I often think about people that had passed on and people that were there and that meant something to me in my existence. And I was thinking of him as a teacher. He never went to school for teaching. So therefore, he was the person that, he was not a person that can tell me the logistics of things or why things worked in a certain way. Why there were the constructs of the Nganga the way they were? Why did spirits do this? Or why we did this in this certain fashion? The reason I learned what I learned from my craft was because I was there by him. I saw him work. Damn it, he barely even spoke. I saw him construct in Gangas. I saw him recite the prayers or the chants or the mambos, as you want to call them. I put my hands by him while he did these things. I brought back two or three, four, five, six different things to him when he asked me for things in Congo. In B Congo. But he was not a teacher. When speaking to someone years after his death and speaking with someone after all this, the person which is very old Gangulero and knows his stuff, he tells me the same thing. He tells me, man, my teacher didn't really teach me shit. I said, like, what do you mean he didn't teach you shit? While I was by him, I learned because I saw him and I followed his steps. And through trial and error, I did the things and, and I gained the confidence of my Mpungu and I gained the confidence of the spirits that were around me. I learned how to play with the objects that were given to me. And I was like, wow. You know, so these stories are far and few between, but they are nonetheless stories. There are things that go on. See, no one, not everyone is a teacher in this spiritual craft. But the apprenticeship. The apprenticeship is where it's at. When you sit down and you look at someone work, when they tell you, hand me this or hand me that. And when I was looking through things today, I saw a, a Masonic um, um, saying. And in the Masonic saying, it said, secrets are put into the craft of the teacher. You will find your secrets in the craft, not in what your teacher says to you. What do I mean by that? You will find it in the construction of the Nganga. You will find it in the construction of your altar. See, because not everything that is written on spirituality is correct for you. Not everyone's science is your science. While someone may, um, why someone may, 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 may say the Bible is not for me, that spirit that works with you may say that spirit, that, that, that Bible is me. While someone may say, I can't stand high John the Conqueror, the other one will say, give me all the high John the Conqueror. See guys, in spirituality, that's why it's called spirituality. There is a connection to spirit. There is that connection to the unknown. In divining. In scrying. In the workings. See, because our 
ancestors, whether no matter where they're from, let's get that right, have had to adapt to the places they're in. They were either put in or brought in or came to. So when someone tells you that this is not meant to be done like this, but your spirit tells you, but that gut feeling tells you that this is the way you're going to do it, guess what? That's the way you're going to do it. You're listening to It's 12 O'Clock Somewhere with Candelo Pindisa. And I'll be right back. Treasure all that's new and true and gay Easy living and we're giving What we know we're dreaming of We are one having fun Walking in the glow of love Smiling faces go It's a wonder, it's so clear By a fountain, climbing mountains As we hold each other near Sipping wine, we try to find That special magic from above As we share our fair talking In the glow of love
every time will always be our friend Reaching far to find a star, our destiny is heaven sent Making known this loving tone, we'll never part the two of us We will always reminisce, kissing in the glow of love When you treasure all that's new and true and gay Easy living when we're given what we know we're dreaming of We are one having fun walking in the glow of love All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the glow of love from a group called Change, of course, featuring Luther Vandross. And you're listening to, of course... It's 12 o'clock somewhere with Ken Delokin Visa, and I am so happy to be here sharing my noon with you. For those of you who happen to be working out somewhere or going about your normal day activities or maybe at your work desk, I thank you. I thank you all. And I give each and every one of you a salam alaikum. I tell you and I ask that all peace be unto you. Well, guys, today's tough tarot of the day is you shoot your eye out. <clears throat> your plans, your planned course of action at this time is reckless, dangerous, and unnecessary. You're only behaving this way for the external validation from your peers. The glory you perceive will be short-lived and unfulfilling. Consider another choice that reflects your true desire. I gotta tell you guys, as I was telling you earlier, and if you didn't get a chance to listen to the beginning of the show, where I give my inputs and, and tell my little things, do yourself a favor and go and check out the beginning of the show. Because it has a lot to do with the way that I'm feeling and the way that I see things are going around me. Again, it is a year of teaching. It is a year of growing. And it is a year of uniting. So I ask you all to at least try to be cordial. For those who you point a finger at, for those that you point a finger at, just for mere ego, maybe those who will harm you will do while doing nothing, while sitting back and being righteous, while sitting back and trying to do the right thing. Often people attack people on their past and on their supposed mannerisms, likes or dislikes or the people that they hang around. In due time, if the people that they hang around are so-called bad people, they will find out. This is not the year for someone to hold on to old baggage. This is the year, as I said earlier, of being the shit without shitting on someone else. Well, guys, I got to tell you that everything in and around the Munasso is going as planned, but everything in and around the Conjure Galas is also going around as planned. We already have dates set up for Salem, Mass. We have dates set up for Omaha, Nebraska. We have dates set up for, of course, our flagship, which is um, um, Denver, Colorado. But do you know that we also have plans for Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and several other places. At the end of January, Hulu Zen Moise and myself will be visiting um, Conjures, Georgia, right on the outskirts of Atlanta, a little place called Wicked Mojo. We will be there on Sunday, giving classes and giving readings. So if you happen to be in and around the Atlanta area and you want to see Hulu Zen, and my, Hulu Zen Moise and myself, do yourself a favor. Give us, send us an email, send us something, or just go by Wicked Mojo and check us out. I also got to send a quick shout out to everyone that's listening to us today. Our chat room filled up a little late because people didn't know I was going to be here. But I want to say hello to Miss E.F. Still. I want to say hello to Miss Chantel. Chantel, sorry. I want to say hello to Mr. Robatala. Miss Erica Pratt, who I haven't seen in quite a while. How are you doing, sister? I also see Miss... Rebecca Obersman, 
I also see Miss Maggie. Ifa Ibeyu just came in, and Ifa Ibeyu is going to be at the Conjure Shop in Omaha, Nebraska in February. So guys, if you have not seen her teach, if you have not gotten a reading from her, and you happen to be in and around Omaha, Nebraska in February, go on over to her page. Go on over to Izzy McDermott's page and go on and check her out while she's there. Because if you miss out, if you miss out, you're going to miss out on a wonderful experience. We also have two new brand new additions to our Conja Gala. Yes, we have two strong, beautiful sisters that are going to be there giving classes, which I will announce as we get a little bit closer. We already have dates. We already have things, but I just do not have everything in front of me so that I can, so that I may relay the message to everyone that's listening to me or that will be listening to me in archives. When we get back, of course, we're going to read from the book The Adventures of High John the Conqueror by Stephen Sandfield. I got to tell you that you're probably listening to stuff you haven't listened to on its 12 o'clock somewhere in quite a while. Some things are repeated. But when I got back and I loaded up today, I had no playlist. So I had to manually put in all this music today. So hopefully you guys are liking what I'm playing. And if you're not, well, this is grown folks music. I'll be right back. Please excuse my dogs. Sing like a bandit stealing time underneath the sycamore train. Cupid by the all sing Valentine's to my sweet lover and maid. Slowly but surely, your appetite. Now that was Terence Trent 
Darby with Wishing Well. Well, um, Rebecca, you just asked me a question and you asked, when will we be at Wicked Mojo? We'll be most of the day there on Sunday, but I don't believe we're going to get there before 11 o'clock. But we'll be there most day on Sunday until whatever closing time is. We'll be giving a class each and we will be giving um, readings there. So, yeah, we'll be there on the third Sunday of January. So, do check us out. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to the shop. But um, Zen Moise tells me that it's a wonderful little shop and that he loves it. And, well, you know, uh, he's never, he's never, I've, I've never proven him wrong. Sorry. Um, he's probably proved me wrong several times. Okay, guys, today's story, and I, I'm going to have to do this quick because I did not know why it's already 1241. Um, today's story of The Adventures of High John the Conqueror by Stephen Sandfield is In the Box. Knowledge can often mean power, and this is a truth High John came to understand early on. Usually, the smartest slave on the plantation got the easiest work, as John was determined to prove to Old Master that he was the smartest of them all. He took to sitting under the kitchen window at the big house each evening, just about the time Old Master and Missy were having their supper. He would sit there quietly and listen and hoping that he might learn something that he could take a little of the slaving out of his life. One spring evening, he heard Master tell his wife, Tomorrow I'm going to send John down to the bottom and have him plow the new ground. John went back to his cabin, but the next morning he was up well before the sun. He got up the plow, out the shed, and the mules out the barn, and he hitched them up. When old master came around and told him, John, today I want you to plow, John cut him off short and said, Yes, I know, master. You want me to plow the new ground. Well, I got the mules hitched and I'm ready to go. John, how did you know I wanted you to do though? Asked the master. Oh, I don't know. I just know it. And it, and I do. I just seem to know everything. John went down to the bottom land to do the plowing. And Master went about his business without giving it any more thought. With the cotton planting on the way, he was good in many other things on his mind. That evening, chats. John sat up under the kitchen window and again listened to Master talking to Missy. It is time to clean out the stables. I think I'll have John do it and spared some manure on the new ground he plowed today. When Master went to the stables the next morning, he saw John raking up and bedding. He already cleaned two stalls. John, Master said, How do you know I wanted the stables clean? I told you, Master. I know everything. I know how, and I know what. I just do it. While there's probably nothing I can't foretell. Old Master was a little past puzzled by this and said, Something funny is going on around here. Maybe so, replied John, but I know things. When I get to the stables clean, I think I'll haul the dirty straw down to the new bottomland. Master didn't say anything, but he began to consider that maybe John did have a special power and that he let him know things. Come that evening, John was under the window again, listening to Master make plans for the next day. The barn leaked a lot during the last rains. I'll think I'll have John fix it. By the time Master got up at the barn, in the morning, there was John carrying plies of wooden stakes up the ladder up to the roof. John, he said, You know I wanted this roof fixed, didn't you? I sure did, Master. I sure did. I keep telling you, I know everything, and I can see everything. There is nothing hid from me. John spent the day repairing the leaks. Master rode off into the neighborhood plantation to meet an old farmer in, the, in those parts. After they talked about their crops and their problems with the slaves, old master began to brag about John. I got a slave down in my place who seems to know everything. Everything. Every day I go out and tell him what I want to do. He's already doing it. The others laughed 
You must be joking, one of them said. There isn't a slave in the world who is that smart. I'm not joking, said Master. My slave John is that smart. He knows everything, he sees everything, and he can't be fooled in. In all my days, I've never heard of such a slave. Couldn't outsmart, boasted one of the men, and everyone agreed with him. You can't outsmart John, shouted Master. You're getting him angry with the word being questioned, and furthermore, I'll bet on it. There was more talk and more arguing before the old master ended up betting his whole plantation, his money, his slaves, and everything he owned that his friend could not fool John. Well, come by the place tomorrow and have something your slave can't tell me about, they said. Master felt sure that he invited the whole big party the next day. John had proved to him that he knew everything, and John would show the others. That evening, Master was telling his wife about what happened, and John sat there listening. They will be coming, they will be coming over at noon, and I thought I'd put a nice spread out on the lawn. John heard that and headed back to his own cabin. He had figured that all he that was all he needed to know. And sure enough, the next morning, John was setting up tables and chairs in the big house. Oh, good for you, John, said Master, when he came out. You know you're going to have a grand party today, don't you? I told you, Master, I know everything. That's good, because I made a large bet on you. A bet on me, asked John. What kind of bet? Come on, laughed Master. You're trying to fool me. I know you know everything. That's just what I bet my friends. John didn't say a word because he knew what to say, but Master continued. I bet all I own on you, John. I'm depending on you. If you'll win, I'm going to make you a very rich man. But if you don't, you're going to be one dead slave. Because I'll whip every bit of skin off your body. You just be here when all my friends come. John knew he was in trouble, but he didn't know what kind of trouble. I have outsmarted myself this time, he thought. I wanted to make, he wanted to make himself scarce. But there's no way he could do that. Before long, Master's friends and the neighbors began to arrive. They brought their wives and children and some of their slaves too. They wanted everyone to see how they were going to make a fool out of John and his master. Finally, when everyone had arrived, the men took out a large wooden box out one of the back of the wagons, set it on the ground. You, John, come here, one of them ordered. John did as he was told, all the time wishing he were home sick in bed. We hear you're pretty smart, the man laughed. Oh, I wouldn't say jo that, John said softly. Well, your master said so. Well, couldn't very much argue with that, because... It is certainly never do a slave to contradict, contradict his own owner in public. John the man went on, we got a box here. Inside the box there's another box, and inside the box there's another box, and still another box. And then there is something inside that last box. I want you to tell us what it is. Old Master stepped forward and said, go ahead, John, show them, show everyone. Show them everything. Show them that you know everything. All you got to do is tell them what's inside the box and you'll be a rich man. But if you don't, like I said, you're going to be one dead slave. Now, what they had put in the box, in the box, in the box, was a raccoon. And the reason they put so many boxes is so that John couldn't hear it scratching. Everyone knew Everyone was so quiet that the loudest sound and the tiny crickets hopping above the branches in that magnolias were overheard. Everyone was watching John, and John was watching the box. He stared at it harder and harder. He didn't have an idea what was in it. He scratched his head. He dropped sweat. As big as your fist began pouring off of him. Sorrier and sorrier, he even tried to prove how smart he was. John began walking around the box and trying to get an idea of what's in the box and what's in the box and in the box. He murmured, he circled, in the box, 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 in the box. 
He knew he was in some kind of trouble he was in now. And he knew the big trouble this time. He circled the box one more time. In the box, in the box, in the box. He finally figured he might as well give up. And he turned to the crowd and said, Well, you got an old coon at last. Everyone started yelling with surprise. When they turned, all the boxes over, a chubby raccoon ran out. An old master threw his hat in the air and told, I told you my John knew everything I told you. And that's how old master won his bet and how high John became a rich man. I got to tell you, this comes from The Adventures of High John the Conqueror by Stephen Sandfield. Pick it up. Give it a read. Read for your children each and every day. Because this is the year of teaching. I'll be right back. Sunlight hurts my eyes And something without warning love Bears heavy on my mind Then I look at you And the world's alright with me Just one look at you And I know it's gonna be Instead of me, always seems to know the way. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. Just one look at you, and I know it's gone.
course, that was Bill Withers with Lovely Day. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. And those of you who did not catch the beginning, I hope that you go back and listen to it in the archives. I got to tell you, I've been pretty busy because I've been putting on the layers of things because I am writing a book and I will be a published author by the end of the year. And yes, I do have a publisher. I tell you, this is going to be a year of transformation and of teaching. I hope that each one teaches one. And what they don't know, you'll ask. Please do hold your loved ones dear. Try to get closer to your children. Try to get closer to your parents if they're still alive. If they're not alive, try to at least build an ancestral altar. The connection is there. All you have to do is seek it. You do not need special prayers or incantations to speak to your ancestors. You speak to them as clearly as I'm speaking to you. Have a wonderful day. And as always, may all the eggums and shadows that accompany you have all the necessary light. From where I can yellow sit. That's it. Salam alaikum, everyone.
Tonight's 12 o'clock somewhere was brought to you by Love Supply Botanica, Kinvisa.org, and of course the Mile High Conjugate Bomb.